on 27th August 2010 in what may be fittingly depicted as a symbol of national rebirth and renewal, Kenya promulgated a new constitution which has been described wound over as progressive. This moment marked a historic transition from the old order to a new one. The 2010 constitution represents the people's aspirations laid out in the text of this preamble articles and schedules. It is a framework for the realization of a shared vision and common agenda. It spells out far-reaching fundamental institutional and other reforms meant to sustain human rights, equality, freedom, democracy, social justice, and the rule of law for the present and the future generations. The history behind making of the Constitution cannot be buried and forgotten as it continues to reverberate as the debates and discussions around this amendment acts back to the process and sacrifices that were made by the Kenyan people over many decades during the search for a new constitutional order. It is the attempt to amend the Constitution as proposed in a document dubbed Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020, which ran to the instant appeals before this court. The Amendment Bill is at the core of the dispute that has engaged all the superior courts on the question of interpretation and application with regard to not only the provisions of Chapter 16 that provides for amendment of the Constitution, but the entire body there too, as the canons of interpretation provided under Article 259, 3, enjoins the court to inter area consider, and I quote, every provision of this Constitution shall be construed according to the doctrine of interpretation that the law is always speaking, end of quote. This means that the Constitution is always speaking to the present and the future generations. Therefore, in the changing their interpretive mandate within framework of a legal dispute before them, courts are required to uphold the Constitution by breathing life to all the provisions whilst promoting the dreams and aspirations of the Kenyan people in a manner that is consistent with the Constitution. In addition, it is envisaged that the approach to interpretation adopted by a court should not render any article or any provisions of the Constitution superfluous or ineffective. It's clear from its reading that the amendment process under the Constitution of India is exclusively vested in the legislature. This therefore means the amendment process of India's constitution can be described as falling under the flexible model of amendment powers in the flexible region dichotomy used to categorize the nature of amendment powers in a given constitution. And for this preposition, I have also read the books by Sakari Ekins and Richard Albert on making, breaking, and changing the constitutions. Subsequently, the basic structure doctrine and the idea of remits of power to amend a constitution have been considered by courts in several jurisdictions across the world and received mixed re reception. For example, the basic structure doctrine and its various variants have been accepted in Bangladesh, Belize, Colombia, Taiwan, Malaysia, Slovakia, and Peru. While courts in France, Georgia, South Africa, Singapore, Zambia, Uganda, and Tanzania have rejected the doctrine. What this state of play demonstrates, which has been recognized by some of the distinguished scholars as reflected in the various materials cited before us, is that the basic structure doctrine has not yet matured into a universal norm of constitutionalism. And for that, I've referred to the writings by Richard Albert, 
Malkas, Makize, and Therese Oke. Courts have adopted the approach of evaluating its fit within their constitutional systems before accepting its applicability in the various jurisdictions where it has been considered. In Kenyan context, this court has already developed an approach which courts are obligated to follow in ascertaining whether to transplant any juridical idea to the Kenyan constitution in the post-2010 constitutional order. In the vetting board case, this court grappled with the question of the scope and effect of the ouster of the judicial review power of the High Court by a constitutional ouster clause. Whereas the court considered similar jurisprudence on ouster clauses from other Commonwealth countries that had been inspired by the landmark decision of the House of Rhodes in the animistic case versus foreign compensation commissions and other. This court developed the interpretive, the interpretive model to be followed, in that case, the vetting board. I have considered the dictum in that case and the imposed obligation by this court under Section 3C of the Supreme Court Act, which provides that we must develop rich jurisprudence that respects Kenya's history and traditions and facilitates its social, economic, and political growth. Accordingly, before declaring the applicability or otherwise of the basic structure doctrine in Kenya's constitutional context, a court is obligated to take into account our constitutional history, especially bearing in mind that, that the doctrine, which found root in 1973 in India, was available when the framers of the Constitution of Kenya conceptualized the provisions of Chapter 6, 16 on amendments. In addition, in evaluating whether the basic structure doctrine is applicable in our constitutional system, a court must take into account the papacy and value-based interpretation decreed by Articles 10, 20, 4, 159, and 259 of the Constitution. Such an approach to constitutional interpretation begins from and remains rooted in the text of the Constitution whilst interpreting it holistically giving effect to its values and principles, and never losing sight of the historical context and the backdrop of the provisions being interpreted. Therefore, to comprehend and contextualize whether the Constitution contemplates the basic structure and doctrine, the starting point should be the rationale behind the provisions of Chapter 16 as documented in the preparatory documents from the Constitution-making process. It is an understatement to say that Kenyan independent constitution endured a legacy of IPA amendment during the post-independent period. The former constitution was flexible, giving the legislative wide power and discretion in amending it. As a result, Parliament undertook so many amendments to the constitution that it lost its original character. The most significant amendments being the manager of the Senate and the House of Representatives to establish a unicameral legislature. 